If you've been thinking about or have started to use new age or witchcraft practices as an attempt to get closer to God or to access your true source of power, then you're definitely in the right place at the right time. Today in this video, I'm going to be sharing with you guys some of the mistakes and deceptions that I ran into while practicing new age and witchcraft practices. And I will also share how I found eternal truth, power, and love in Jesus Christ. If you're new here, hey, my name is Desiree. And on this channel, I like to discuss how I've made lots of mistakes in my past, made many sins on my spiritual journey, but ultimately God's grace has saved me and I love to share those lessons with you guys. All right guys, so now that we got those formalities out of the way, in today's video, we are going to be discussing my spiritual journey and how it either like positively or negatively affected my spiritual well-being and ultimately the trajectory of my life. And I'm also going to be sharing with you guys how even with evidence and trial and error of different religious practices, I still ultimately found my forever home, my true power and love in Jesus Christ. So I was always raised in the church, not necessarily from my parents, but my grandparents. They were definitely active church members and they served in their church as well. So I was in like the little youth choir growing up um, at one of my grandmother's churches. And I continued in the children's choir until about the age of 12, which I believe is like as old as you can be in the kids choir. And then after that, like I was done. <laughs> like after that, I was like, oh, I don't have to come here anymore, so I'm not going to. And unfortunately, that's where that separation of God definitely took place. So I definitely did not have my own relationship with Jesus Christ, but I was very, very much so aware of his presence. So as I kind of got older, I would say when I was in college now, right, I began to get curious about other religions. I think my need for like information began to catch up with me and I started to kind of think like a rational adult. And I say that because I know that many people have questions about Jesus. Many people have questions about how can God be real? How can, you know, there be an infinite person or being in the sky who is in control of everything and why would he allow such suffering to happen like these are very very real questions that i think almost every human being has so because of that i began to question like which religious group did i really feel connected to which religion did i feel made the most sense for me i began to ask a lot of questions like if christianity is so good then why was it forced on black people during slavery you know what religions did black people practice like before they came to a America. But I definitely did my research in religions like um, the ancient Egyptian religions, different ancient um, tribal spirituality. I also looked into Islam as well as a possible religious group to follow. At the time when I was graduating college, which was when this curiosity was happening, it was very popular to believe in new age practices. It was like the new religion on the block, right? Everybody was posting about positive affirmations and the law of attraction and all these different things like that. And in my spiritual journey, I also read a lot of books. Some of the books that I read were The Secret, of course, because I think anybody who is trying to seek spirituality or their divine power, they start to read The Secret. I also read the book, The Alchemist. I also read T.D. Jake's book, Destiny, at that time. I began to become really influenced by social media. So while everyone was saying things like positive affirmations and focusing on the law of attraction, and these were things that appealed to me because many people in my age group were doing them. A lot of the people who were using these type of practices seemed to know what they were talking about. Um, I don't really wanna say that they seemed successful, but they just seem to be like at peace. They seem to have found their connectivity to God. And that's ultimately what I was looking for, right? I think it's fair to say that anyone who is on a spiritual journey is looking for God. 
I don't think that anyone who is on a spiritual journey is really, you know, saying that there is no God. I think that they are trying to find God and whatever comes of that spiritual journey and whatever information they find, then that becomes their conclusion about God. And so ultimately for me, you know, what I wanted was to be in line with God. I wanted to be in communication with God. I wanted to have a close relationship with God. I wanted to access the divine power of God. I wanted to know what my divine power was and who I was as an individual on this earth and how powerful am I, you know, where, where do my powers lie? And so the new age practices that spoke about a lot of like making things appear out of nowhere or, you know, manifesting them because you believe that they will appear. These were all things that were very enticing to me and they ultimately answered the question of what I was looking for, which was my own self power, my own identity, and ultimately like my place and my relationship to God and how we would like work together. I will also say that my choice in religion, I think is also shaped or was also shaped by my actions as an individual. So at this time when I was on this spiritual journey, I was very much involved in um, drug use. I also dibbled and dabbled within the strip club and continued to dance from time to time when I needed money. I think it's safe to say that as I was looking for God, my actions began to dictate who that God was to me or who I was going to allow God to be to me. Because if God was telling me that the things I'm doing is wrong, then maybe that God is not for me. This also brings up a valid point that I began to even say that I was God. I remember at one point actually believing that. I remember believing that maybe there is no one God in the universe, but that we are gods as people and that we have the power to create the world within our hands and we have the power to make our own morality of what is right and what is wrong. And I wholeheartedly believe that in that time when I thought that I was my own God, that's when I literally did whatever I want. Like I remember the times when I was still dancing at the strip club and I thought that it was okay. I know that that would only be okay because I felt like I was the maker of my own destiny because I was the one who called all the shots. And that's why I was able to wake up and go to sleep and do those things and still have a smile on my face and still think that everything was good. And it's really sad to say, like as I'm kind of speaking it out of my own mouth, it hurts to say those things that I would like that I ever spoke those words out of my mouth or that I even felt that way, but that's okay. Cause that's why I'm here today to keep you guys or to try to steer you guys away from making those mistakes. Because once you have the relationship with the father, that is so, it's the most beautiful relationship you'll ever have. I would, I would not want to be on my own. I would not want to be my own God. And I know, and I'm humble enough to know that I am not my own God. It's just really sad. It's really sickening to know that I thought that. And I'm just thankful to God that I'm not there anymore. So just to give you guys an example of these rituals and practices that I would participate in, burning sage to try to cleanse spirits out of the room, wearing crystals. I would even use tarot cards for a small period of time. I dibble dabbled with tarot cards, trying my best to obtain divine wisdom. Like this just goes to show how lost I was. <laughs> like I was so lost and so thirsty for revelation and understanding of like what to do with my life that I even relied on tarot cards to guide me, to guide me, right? I consulted witches. I, I won't expose this person's name, but the witch that I remember going to seek wisdom from, she was very popular on social media. She had a large following, you know, she always 
um, was very confident about her witchcraft practices and her use of tarot cards and it seemed like you know she it seemed like she was helping people because a lot of people will be in the comments you know engaging saying that what she was doing was helpful to them she would charge people to like do consultations and eventually one day I'd, I said you know I'm gonna do that I'm gonna you know participate in this tarot card reading with her I even remember using heavily angel numbers I was so into that like every day if I saw a number if I saw it a couple times or whatever here I am on my phone trying to figure out what this angel number means and what is it saying to me this is really kind of where the dark works come in and where things really just started to like not seem so wholesome anymore. I know with the angel numbers, I never really got exact guidance. You see, the thing about the devil and the enemy is that he will entice you with false truths. When the devil operates and when the devil when the devil manipulates you or is trying to manipulate you, he will take portions of truth and try to make it seem like it's the full truth. Like even saying that like we as people have divine power. It's like, yes, we do have divine power, but we have divine power through Christ. We don't have divine power because of ourselves. We are connected to a source that gives us that power. And I just remember like the angel numbers at first, like they just used to hit. Like I remember my first time doing the angel numbers, like it just seemed like it was exactly what it was supposed to be. And um, it was like reading off information of my life, like to the T, right? And I think that's what really kind of got me hooked to it. As time kind of went on, it just created confusion because I became almost like obsessed with these numbers. I became so like dependent on them. Like, oh, I see that number. So that means I'm supposed to watch out for this. Or I see that number. Uh oh, I'm supposed to watch out for this. And, and even to this day, I still have to like train myself to know that when I see certain numbers, that means absolutely nothing. <laughs> like it's just, it's a coincidence that I'm seeing that time or that number in that specific order. It is a coincidence. It has no control over my life. It has no control over my destiny. Nowhere in the Bible are angel numbers listed, explained, mentioned at all. Like it is just not a thing. But at that time, you know, and especially because again it was so popular you know people just really kind of carried on with these like numbers having so much significant value in their lives and I thought that it had significance for me too but I remember one time I was telling a friend about the angel numbers and like trying to kind of explain to him what it was about and how it works and stuff like that and I just remember as the weeks kind of went on my friend became like obsessed with these angel numbers like obsessed to the point where it made me kind of like like maybe you're taking it too far or like maybe I shouldn't have even told him that, you know? And I think that now looking back, I think that I really caused that person to stumble. Um, but I definitely do pray for that individual and I pray for their deliverance from that. Another example of when things really started to kind of get dark and scary was I was at a friend's house, someone who I was dating at the time. I remember um, just kind of having a regular conversation with him. And as we were just talking, randomly my phone just like the Siri came on it was like doo -doo, like you know Siri was about to say something and I'm like I didn't call Siri like I wasn't even talking to my phone or anything then the phone said across the screen it said the b-i-t-c-h word you better go home right now and I was just like what I was like am I tripping <laughs> like am I tripping and the friend that I told this to the guy I was dating he was like maybe you're just like tweaking a little bit but I'm like no I know what I saw I know I didn't just hear the sound of my phone going off and I literally watched the words come up on my phone and I'm like since when does Siri curse 
like siri doesn't curse does she i don't think she does like i'm like since when does siri curse since when does siri talk like that and i wasn't even talking to her so why would she even say that to me like once that happened i definitely was like is everything okay <laughs> like i had to kind of start questioning like it that didn't feel right that didn't sit right with me that didn't feel like something normal you know what i mean and i didn't just brush it off as a coincidence and i'm glad that i didn't the last example that i have of when like things weren't really going well and i started to realize that this lifestyle wasn't as good as it's cracked up to be was when i was talking to a friend and i told him that i was a witch and i said to him i sought information from a witch and in fact i'm a witch and he was like appalled he was like what like what did you just say and i was trying to explain to him this new age idea that a witch was actually an acronym for a woman in total control of herself or something like that right and he was not hearing that like he was like no that is not right like it's not okay to be a witch like it's not okay and i just was like you know you don't understand it could be a good thing and stuff but after that conversation it really kind of forced me to think about it and that definitely left a seed in me of like yeah this is not this is really not okay on top of that i began to just notice that my lifestyle and the people that i was like hanging around who also practice these things they weren't really doing well for themselves you know men that i was dating who practiced these type of things they suffered from tremendous anxiety depression paranoia super duper intoxicated and high off drugs like it was just like the lifestyle around the new age world was just a lot of drugs a lot of hallucinations a lot of like just kind of going off of like your feelings and things and one thing that i do know now is that your feelings will have your life up and down like if you are living off of your feelings your life will never be consistent and i was living that way and so were the people around me who were engaged in these type of practices and i began to just kind of notice that it was just very unfortunate fruitful and I definitely kept note of that once I began to change my friend group and I got around different individuals who were actually Christians they began to reintroduce me to Christian principles and biblical wisdoms that at first sight or like um, kind of as, as they were first given to me I wasn't really always the most receiving of that information but I think that me just being around those individuals for so long it just began to like plant little seeds here and there and it began to eventually um, take root and sprout in my heart and one of the friends who I'm actually mentioning now his father was actually a pastor and I was able to sit with him one day and kind of like ask him about all the things that I had been involved in when it comes to my spiritual journey and I was able to really pick his brain on what was actually right and what was actually wrong from a biblical standpoint and the way that he explained everything to me with kindness and love and compassion it really helped me to receive the information so when i began to speak with this pastor and he began to educate me on things like how angel numbers are like nowhere in the bible it's nowhere to be found things like sage and stones are just dead practices and they're not living objects that can actually produce power in our lives but in fact they're just trinkets and i really really thank god for this pastor and also for my friends at that time because they really helped me to stay within that environment of christianity and i think one thing that also really helped me to get into christianity was the idea of like prosperity preachers i know that prosperity preachers are definitely shunned upon 
and they are you know not really seen as spreaders of like the whole truth of the bible because they just mostly focus on like money and finances and stuff but to a new believer who is trying to seek god for like the betterment of their lives you know just even are just curious about god and what god can offer them or what god can bring to their life um prosperity teachers or even teachers who just speak messages of hope and motivation they were very appealing to me because i needed those messages at that time to help me with the productivity of my life as these years are passing of me starting off my spiritual journey to the time of me actually coming into christianity you know i was very lost in between those years and i didn't really like know what i was going to do not only spiritually but just like with my life and with my own purpose and like you know how i was going to make an impact in this world it was just an overall like i was literally having a quarter life crisis <laughs> like i was literally literally having a quarter life crisis trying to figure out who i am and what impact i was going to make and what career decision am i going to stick to and i'm going to you know try my best to be successful at it. You know, I needed that hope and that motivation and someone to literally yell at me in the TV. Those type of messages were exactly what I needed. And so, yeah, I just really started to watch more of these type of motivational messages. Um, I started to really just believe them. They started to become a part of my daily routine where I would wake up and listen to these sermons. Honestly, upon listening to this type of messages and these type of sermons about how God can make your life better and that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, I really began to see actual like progress in my life like i was actually waking up earlier and like working towards things I, this is when i started like my fitness brand and i really started to um put myself out there and to not be so afraid of change it was like i was actually seeing like real fruits of my labor whereas when i was in the new age life i really didn't see much fruits of anything like i would accomplish little things here and there but i don't know it was just something about God like it was just something about God that just felt so empowering and so right so fast forward this is now 2018 and I decided to get baptized so me getting baptized was me actually saying to God God I am ready to live my life with you I'm ready to live my life in agreement with you I'm willing to do what you say, at least that's what I thought at the time. <laughs> you know, I was ready to live my life with Jesus. I felt like I've, I've accomplished more in my life than I ever had with Jesus. I felt at home with Jesus. I felt empowered with Jesus. I felt like I had a new life with Jesus. And honestly, I just, I just really can honestly describe it as me being at home. Like my heart and my soul felt like this is where I was supposed to be the whole time. But also, like I said, with the bad experiences that I kept having with New Age, with the people that were involved in New Age and witchcraft, I was just really ready to let that go. Like I felt like I'm good away from that so in my walk with christianity i began to do things like become a motivational speaker and help to speak to young people about not taking the same roads that i took i also began to help with charity organizations giving out food to the homeless. My fitness brand was thriving because I was being consistent. I was diligent to my work. I honestly felt that I could do all things through Christ who strengthened me. Yet and still, while all of these great things were happening, there was still a lot for me to learn as a Christian. <laughs> um, as many Christians probably already know, you know, your Christian walk is something that you mature into. Your relationship with God and even how you see God in your life 
is something that you will develop and mature into as you continue to read his word and as you continue to surrender your life to him. And I definitely had a lot of surrendering to do. So I go into greater detail into that in my testimony video, which I will put in the end screen for you guys, which talks about how I went from a depressed, lukewarm Christian to a Christian who was captivated and in love with Jesus Christ, fully saved, no shame, like, and the encounter that I had with him where he showed himself and revealed his love to me. But that is all for our spiritual journey today, guys. I hope that this video will help anyone who may still be lost or confused and knowing that it is okay to feel that way. But please spare yourself the deception. Please spare yourself the disappointment and the wrong mistakes that you may make while being in the devil's snare. I really hope that God plants a seed in your heart. And I know that if you have an open heart, and an open mind and that you earnestly seek God with all of your heart that he will water that seed and that he will help you come to full revelation of who he is. That is all for today, guys. Stay well, stay blessed, stay highly favored by the Lord, and I will see you guys in my next video.